solution on almost all the crises that are happening across the country. Like the Southern Kaduna, the Niger Delta issues and other. The leader guides strategy for heightened security checks. Just how do you repay those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice? Armed forces get more cover for patriotism. Mobilization for second Niger Bridge on the first lane. Plus, aviation minister talks details on runaway re rehabilitation with Senate. A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on Net NTA Network News tonight. I am Fatima Abbas Hassan. President Muhammadu Buhari will leave Abuja this Friday to Banjo, the Gambia, as the leader of the ECOWAS mediation team to meet with President Yaya Jami of the Gambia and the president-elect Adama Barrow to continue dialogue on the political situation in the West African country. The president will be joined by President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia and chairperson of ECOWAS, President Ernest Koroma of Sierra Leone and the immediate past president of Ghana, John Mohama, who is the coordinate mediate, co mediator of Gambia mission. Later, same day, President Buhari will travel to Bamako, Mali to participate in the 27th Africa-France Summit for Partnership, Peace and Emergence, convened by French President Francoise Hollande to strengthen cooperation between France and African countries on peace and security, economic partnership and development. President Buhari is expected to reaffirm Nigeria's commitment to global efforts against terror and underline the need for improved collaboration to address the menace in the region. President Buhari will underscore the efforts government is making to improve Nigeria's business environment to attract more foreign direct investment. The president will be accompanied by governors Aminu Tambwal of Sokoto State and Abiola Ajimobi of Oyo State, the ministers of foreign affairs, internal, interior, and defense. A high-level strategic meeting on national security presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari held at the State House this Thursday. The meeting, which lasted over five hours behind closed doors, was attended by the Minister of Defense, the National Security Advisor, the Service Chiefs, Inspector General of Police, as well as Directors General of the Department of State Security and the National Intelligence Agency. Defense Minister Marsun Ang Ali and the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Burate, told newsmen that meeting critically analyzed ongoing operations in parts of the country and charted the best way forward. Able to come to a conclusion on almost all the crises that are happening across the country, like the Southern Kaduna, the Niger Delta issues, and other major crisis areas were discussed and resolution were passed. Any new directive from uh, the commander in chief? The directive is still there. We are still pursuing it. It is a task that must be accomplished How at all costs. No, our troops are already in Southern Kadu Kaduna. We have our special forces operating there along with uh, all other security agencies. And uh, we intend also to have an exercise uh, very soon in Southern Kaduna to cover uh, some parts of Plateau and indeed part of Kano State completely. So it's part of our strategy also this year to continue all the exercises we've had uh, before. President Mohamedou Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that the goal of achieving national prosperity is realizable with genuine efforts by his administration to address fundamental challenges. He stated this while formally receiving the 2016 winners of the Nigerian National Order of Merit Award. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has that report.
Therefore, this Professor Omo Umin Sadiq for Science and Professor Tanure Ojaide for Humanities were led to the State House by the Chairman Governing Board of the Nigeria National Order of Merit Award, Professor Etim Moses Essien. We think that Mr. President would consider setting up the laureate and other intellectuals, creative Nigerians to serve as a think tank to help the country move forward in the various directions which have hindered the progress of this country. President Muhammadu Buhari, who formally congratulated the National Order of Merit Award winners for their accomplishments, challenged them and other intellectuals to key into the Change Nigeria project by contributing generously to national growth and development. His administration, he emphasized, has clearly identified the fight against corruption and insecurity as well as the reinvigoration of the economy as critical pathways for a prosperous Nigeria. We are very lucky to identify three fundamental problems worrying us. Insecurity, because unless the country is secure, there are nothing you can do. The economy, lack of jobs, and sadly the worst of them, really, corruption. We are doing our best, and uh, we are lucky people are understanding and are willing you know, to cooperate with us. The National Order of Merit Award winners were full of gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari for the honor done to them, as well as his genuine commitment towards rebuilding Nigeria and gave suggestions on the best way forward. Because our oil and gas resources will eventually run dry, heavy investment in solar, Biomass, geothermal, hydropower, wind, and even nuclear must be made immediately. There should be re rethinking about the way uh, the Niger data issue is being pursued. To me, I feel reaching the people or the communities directly should be more pursued since the militants that the federal government tends to negotiate with do not fully represent the people. 73 Nigerians have so far been conferred with the National Order of Merit Award for their outstanding contributions to the academic growth and development of Nigeria since 1979. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The failure of the Nigerian elite in coming together to fashion out the way forward for the country has been identified as one of the factors responsible for various challenges, especially religious conflicts. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, who made the observation at a book launch, says religion is often manipulated by the elite for self-advancement instead of the general good. State House correspondent Jide Onifade has that report. Taking a tweak on the original title of the book, which is Religion and the Making of Nigeria, the Vice President rechristened the book as Religious Conflicts and the reshaping of Nigeria. He explains that it is clear to everyone that religion has played critical role in education, health, and other areas, and could not, therefore, be categorized as being bad. There is no real concern for how the majority of Nigerians will benefit from this Nigerian project. And that is a consensus of sorts that is reached by the elite, whether they are Muslims or Christians or wherever they are from. So for me, the very first thing is to, is, is, is to understand that it is that manipulation, it's that frequent use of, uh, of religion for manipulative purposes that really has led to a lot of the instability that we're experiencing. He observes that not only religion, as the elite used to their advantage, but the emotion attached to the discussion of the issue. While advocating the proper prosecution of cases and valuing the life of every Nigerian, he stresses the need for the people to have a consensus on how to move the nation forward. Discussions, which include Professor Wale Shunika, Bishop Matthew Kuka, and Dr. Tokuru Bello Ingawa, made contributions on the need to employ religion as a positive tool for national development. If we do not tame religion in this nation, religion will kill us. Can religion, should religion lead to the making of Nigeria? The answer is no. Author of the book, Olufemi Vaughan, said the book examines how Christians 
Muslims and indigenous religious structures have provided the essential social and ideological frameworks for the construction of the modern Nigerian state and society. In Abuja, Jideo Nifade, NT News. In another development, the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says private sector participation is key to the development of the health sector. He stated this at a conference on scaling up innovative solutions for effective health systems through public-private partnership in Abuja. The Vice President says this is imperative as the public sector does not have enough resources and efficiency to effectively provide all that are needed in the health sector. To recognize that without, without a really robust uh, health sector plan, you know, and we would, we would, I know that uh, the Ministry of Health has developed one, but it must be one that is frequently responding to what is going on, frequently responding to the changes, frequently responding, especially to in changes in technology and changes in innovation and all of that. That is um, so crucial. And we must not, I don't think that we, are, we can continue uh, in the way that we've always done our planning, where we have, you know, where we, we are looking at a doc, one document for, you know, as it were, for the next uh, generation. And more on that program, despite considerable progress in the last decade in Nigeria's reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health and nutrition, the indices are not satisfactory. This is why the Federal Ministry of Health is partnering key players in use of innovative and sustainable means to develop the sector and make it a bigger contributor to the nation's economy. Health correspondent Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju has more on that. The Nigerian Service Delivery Innovative Challenge Initiative is a platform to scale up innovative solutions for an efficient health system where each birth is attended and recorded and improve basic primary health care service, particularly in the Northeast and underserved population. Innovations are expected in form of financing, technology, and service delivery addressing the urgent RMNCAH and nutrition needs of affected populations is a key priority of the present administration. The sector is in urgent need of responsive, cost-efficient service delivery approaches to restore the provision of basic health services to affected populations. To create what we're trying to do today. Innovators are expected to submit concept notes that had been piloted and proven to be replicated for immediate progress in some areas with low indices, such as vaccination coverage, contraceptive prevalence rates, vitamin A coverage among children of six months to five years, coverage of skilled birth attendance, and prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju, NTA News. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, says Nigeria is committed to the One China policy. The minister said this at a press briefing with his Chinese counterpart in Abuja. Gabriel Odu has the details. The One China policy recognizes Taiwan as a territory of China. China regards Taiwan as a breakaway province and does not consider it as sovereign state. Minister of Foreign Affairs reaffirms Nigeria's commitment to the One China policy. The People's Republic of China is uh, a member uh, of the United Nations and uh, China about our position on the issue of One China policy. We adhere to it completely and uh, there is no ambiguity uh, in that uh, at all. <laughs> China has now become the number one source of import for Nigeria. And Nigeria, for its part, is the biggest market for contracts for engineering projects by China in Africa and a main partner for investment. The Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi is on tour of five African countries. In Abuja, Gabriel Udu, NTA News. 
In the meantime, the presidency says Nigeria has not cut ties with Taiwan, contrary to media reports. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, says the official relationship between Nigeria and Taiwan has been at the level of trade representation, and this has not changed from what it used to be. Taiwan Trade Office is the only Taiwanese representation in Nigeria, and Nigeria's trade office in Taipei is the country's only representation in Taiwan. This was alluded to by the former Nigerian ambassador to Liberia, Ayo Adigo, on Nigeria's recognition of the One China policy in our earlier news bulletin. The main issue here is that the one China policy that the Chinese government has said is, is a diplomatic recognition of China as the main Chinese government all over the world. There are no two Chinese governments. That has to be clear because some people try to mix uh, one China principle with one right. China policy. They are not the same. But that is the one that some countries are taking when they still have this dispute. Nigeria relation is the biggest market for China. We, the, the greatest uh, engineering world, and as you can see, in terms of relation trade and uh, infrastructure, infrastructure development, we stand more to gain okay. with China. And our people also are there, the relation is robust. So you cannot afford to offend China because of Taiwan. Okay. So and away from international relations, as Nigerians, get set to back the 2017 Armed Forces Remembrance Day, members of the House of Representatives had advised the federal government to institute insurance and housing schemes for its personnel as a cushion for disability or death. The House also condemned what it described as indiscriminate use and abuse of personnel of the Armed Forces. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unkwo as that report. The Armed Forces Remembrance Day is a day Nigerians reflect on the supreme price paid by officers and men of the service. As the 2017 edition comes with the defeat of Boko Haram insurgents and the reclaiming of some piece of forest, House members argue that the best appreciation and motivation for these gallant officers is to improve on their welfare. This came in a motion jointly moved by Representatives Mohamed Mungono from Borno State and Abdul Samad Dasuki from Sokoto State. Also urge corporate organizations to key into programs aimed at bettering the lives of the veterans. As a nation, just how do you repay those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice? The House once again commended President Muhammad Buhari and the Joint Civilian Task Force for the victory over Boko Haram as they observed the minute silence in honor of the fallen heroes. Members resolved to invite the Minister of Aviation to brief the House on planned closure of the Nnam Dazikwe International Airport, moved by Representative Olufunke Adedoyen from Kwara State. The House urged President Buhari to extend Nigeria's readiness to offer outgoing Gambian President Yahya Jame asylum as a way of ending the political stalemate in the Gambia. This is sequel to a motion moved by Representative Sani Zoro from Jigawa State. We have all read accounts about people fleeing the Gambia. So that there is peace in the Gambia and we retain our leadership position in the sub-region. We should wait. If Yahya Jame asks or seeks for asylum, then it can be brought before this honorable chamber. And our president is going for a negotiation. It is important that we give him the courage. Is to strengthen Mr. President's hands in terms of giving him more tools. Members are unhappy with what they described as refusal to honor its invitation by the Inspector General of Police over the 2016 budget implementation and we invited him. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, ATN News. And as part of welfare package for the Nigerian Legion, the Nasarawa State Government has approved the engagement of more widows and orphans of fallen heroes of the Nigerian Armed Forces into the state civil service. Governor Umaru Tanku Almakura announced this at the launch of the emblem and appeal fund for the 2017 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. 
Joshua Ojito now reports. The decision by the Nusrawa State Government to employ 100 members of the Nigerian Legion to serve as security watchers in the state was announced by Governor Umaru Tenko Alimakura at the launch of Emblem for the 2017 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration in Lafia, the state capital. Appreciating the gallant effort of the Nigerian Armed Forces in securing the territorial integrity of the country, Governor Alimokura explained that the 100 members of the Nigerian Legion that will be recruited will serve in various communities and offices as security watchers to complement effort of security personnel. This administration will support your activities geared towards maintaining peace and order in our society. Also, the state government donated the sum of 5 million naira, a brand new 18-seater bus, and 100 bags of rice to members of the Nigerian Legion in the state. Meanwhile, Governor Al-Mokura taxed traditional rulers in the state on peace building amongst various ethnic nationalities in their domains. He was speaking when he received separately the new Osana of Kiana, Al-Haji Abdullahi Amegwa Agbo the Thought, and the traditional rulers from northern zone of the state. In Lafia, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. The federal government says it is unrelenting in its efforts to ensure the safe return of the remaining Chibok schoolgirls who are still in captivity. President Muhammadu Buhari gave the assurance while responding to a letter written to him by Ms. Malala Yousafzai, the co-founder of the Malala Fund. President Buhari said while he cannot divulge the details of ongoing negotiations to secure the release of the girls due to the sensitive nature of the negotiations, he gave an assurance of the doggedness, commitment, and sincerity of the federal government towards ensuring the safe return of others still in captivity. In the letter signed on his behalf by the Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Muhammad, the president said the gallant troops of the Nigeria military have recently scored a great victory by seizing control of the Sambisa forest, the last stronghold of the Boko Haram elements who are responsible for the kidnap of the girls. The United Nations organization has reassured Borno state of his total support in the quest to address the challenges confronting the state occasioned by Boko Haram insurgency. Executive Director for the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, Professor Baba Tunde Oshotimei, gave the assurance during his visit to Beiduguri, accompanied by the Women Affairs Minister Aisha Jume Al Hassan. Abubakar Mohammed Musa completes the report. Professor Babatunde Oshotimei said the United Nations will support the state to resettle IDPs in their communities and further expressed the need to build resilience to enable them to return to normal life. The NFP executive director commended the governor for putting the state in the course of progress in spite of the challenges, assuring that the UN will work to restore the lost, lost people. Governor Shetima appreciated the UNFPA for its support in the state, especially the girl-child education, which he said he is passionate about and called for more support in that direction. The governor said the state government has rebuilt communities in Kazan, Kondiga local governments, among others, and more are being reconstructed to enable IDPs return home and expressed commitment to gender empowerment. Minister of Women Affairs Aisha Jumai Al Hassan appreciated the UNFPA for the support given to her ministry, especially in the rehabilitation and reintegration program for the 24 rescued Chibok girls. The minister also thanked the state governor for his support. In Nibiri, Abubakar Muhammad Musa, continues. And as the war against insurgency records, more successes in the Northeast, leading to upsurge of internally displaced persons, the Victim Support Fund is scaling up operations in health, education, and women empowerment. Executive Director of the fund, Sunday Ochoche, said this while interacting with the UNDP resident representative, Edward Callan. Fatima Aliyu completes the report. The meeting between the two agencies with similar mandates of providing succor to victims of insurgency and survivors dwelt extensively on nipping the bond, the root cause of the insurgency, and helping the victims to overcome trauma of war. With over 2 million people currently displaced in Nigeria, 
quick, efficient, and effective resettlement of victims to resume agricultural activities and ensure food security remains a priority. So one of my biggest efforts is going to, to, to focus on how really I can get the United Nations to come together, deliver, deliver us one, bring in the synergies and comparative advantages of the respective UN agencies at work to support the effort of the government of Nigeria. So we'll be establishing an office in Medugri and another office in Yola. The UNDP representative also reacted to allegation of the misuse of funds meant for IDPs by international agencies. To achieve effective and efficient collaboration in the resettlement of the internally displaced persons, the meeting for the advocate synergy between the UN, international communities, and the Nigerian governments in Abuja, Fatima Ali, NTA News. In a related development, the United Nations Commission for Refugees has donated 2,000 shelter kits and cash assistance of 100 million naira to 2,000 beneficiaries selected from six communities ravaged by insurgents. Governor Kashim Shatima launched the distribution of the shelter kits in Konduga town, one of the benefiting communities. Mohamed Goni now reports. Thank you, NHCR, for the continued support to the state. And further commended the Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Professor Babagana Omara, for his commitment towards the reconstruction process and demonstration of transparency, and urge beneficiaries to use the donation for the purpose intended. UNHCR's head of sub-office in the north is Mr. Siva Shulimbase. The UNHCR believes that temporary measures does not solve the challenges of reconstruction and resettlement facing the state, hence its decision to key into the efforts of the state government in providing permanent solution. Commissioner for Reconstruction and Resettlement, Professor Babagana Umara said, the UNHCR is constructing 50 units of one bedroom class in Chubok, and that 65 million naira has been released to the Ministry of the Reconstruction for that purpose, in addition to construction of livelihood center in Burma. In Nairobi, Mahmoud Kwoni, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Operation Code for Information Messengers of Government on the move. The details when we return in just a moment. Stay with us. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. M6 challenge using your new GOV M6. Carry out everything on that list starting now. for a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Juni M6, always in power. The Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PTAD, invites all civil service pensioners who retired under the old pension scheme in the south-south states of Rivers and Bielsa to their verification exercise. The verification is scheduled to hold as follows. Port Harcourt, 16th to 24th January 2017. Yenagoa, 16th to 18th January 2017. Pensioners are advised to come along with their necessary documents as advertised in the Vanguard newspaper of 12th January and the Sun newspaper of 13th January 2017. For more information, visit our website at 
www.peter.gov.ng. Call Peter toll free number on 0800 7823 Pensioners in Delta, Edo, Cross River, and Aquaibum states are kindly requested not to come for this verification, as the dates and location of their verification exercise will be advertised in due course. Signed, Management. For future assured projects and its components, get involved. Initiated by the wife of the president, Her Excellency Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is not relenting in championing the cause of Nigerian women and children. Its provision of free medical screening, educational support, and the fight against malnutrition, especially in the Northeast, has indeed informed international recognition, partnerships, and awards. We are very grateful and appreciative for your wonderful gesture you have accorded to us. With future assured, Nigerian women and children are assured of a bright future. Future is assured when we join hands to promote the health of our women and children. Get involved. Get involved and support the Future Assured initiative. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Appreciating the resilience of the Nigerian Armed Forces, join the Minister of Defense, Service Chiefs and other stakeholders in the defense sector as we pray for the Nigerian Armed Force veterans of various world and internal conflicts. Venue, National Mosque, Friday 13 January 2017. Time, 1 p.m. The welfare of the troops, the veterans and the families of our fallen heroes is the responsibility of all. Be a part of the national appreciation of the resilience of the armed forces, our veterans and the families of the fallen heroes. The efficacy of prayer is not to be underestimated. Join other Nigerians as we pray for Nigeria, our troops, our veterans, our fallen heroes, and those they left behind. Join us. Announcer, Brigadier General Rabe Abu Bakar for National Planning Committee. Okay, sir. You may now go in for your interview. Thank you. Ah, my shoe. And to think I just bought this very expensive foreign shoe two months ago. So sorry about your shoes. This is why I advise my friends to always patronize made in Nigeria products. See this shoe. It's made in Nigeria. And I've had it for two years. And it's still as good as the day I bought it. Made in Nigeria products are good quality and stringent government regulations and certification now mean that goods made in Nigeria meet international standards. Make the patriotic choice today. Buy right by Made in Nigeria. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. The attention of the management of the NTA Television College, Joss, has been drawn to some illegal websites currently operated in the name of the college by some unscrupulous individuals to defraud applicants. In view of this, the college authority wishes to inform the public that any person or group asking applicants to make financial transactions should be considered as online scammers and fraudsters. All admission forms can only be purchased at the college or any NTA station across the nation. Also, members of the public are to kindly contact the college before making any payments on 0803 721-6725 or 0803-314-6151. NTA Television College Joss does not operate any online or individual accounts. Be warned that the college will not be held accountable for any online payments. Announcer, Management. <laughs> We're glad to have you join us again on NTA Network News tonight. Minister of State for Aviation Hadi Sirika has reiterated federal government's plan to shut down operations at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, for six weeks. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zayanu reports that the minister gave this indication when he appeared before the Senate plenary this Thursday. Addressing the Senate plenary, Hadi Sirika said closing the airport is the best out of all other options considered by the federal government in the interest of the public. The runway has exceeded its lifespan by 14 years, designed for 20 years. That in itself, without being told, as we do it in aviation, is either calendar month 
or usage? Up to four major repairs has been carried out on this runway since inception. The second runway for Abuja, which ought to have been built with between 28 to 30 billion naira, was uh, offered at 64 billion naira by Julius Berger. If all equipment are on ground, a new runway can be built in six months. Look at whatever decision should be made at the end of the day in light of the criticality of safety and security. Answering questions from senators, the minister said total cost of repairs at Abuja runway will amount to 5.4 billion naira. If you are surfacing the entire runway or portion of it, at the top layer, it's possible. If you are digging up the entire architecture and building up a new runway like we're going to do, it's tough, difficult, time-taking. Minister of Transportation, Rotimia Mechi, who also appeared before the Senate, declined comment. Can I seek the permission of the Senate to proceed to jobs where I have a function? The Senate has adjourned further briefing on the matter to next week Tuesday when Minister of Works, Power and Housing, as well as that of the Federal Capital Territory, are expected to address the lawmakers. I hope that between now and Tuesday you will have met with the Society of Engineers. We will also invite them here on Tuesday. The, the, the constructor, Julius Berger as well, the Minister of Works, if he's not here, will send his palm sec. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has resubmitted nominations of the 46 non-career ambassadors to the Senate for confirmation. Thank you, Mr. President, and indeed thank my distinguished colleagues. And seriously thank Mr. President for including the FCT in the ambassadorial nominee. In the meantime, Senate leader Ahmed Lawa has reiterated his conviction to further unite both caucuses of the chambers with a view to enhancing conducive atmosphere devoid of animosity. The leader was addressing Senate correspondent. I also believe in the interdependency and cooperative governance between the various arms of government. Even when I was in opposition, and I did that for 16 years, I remained supportive. Ahmed Lawar is the longest serving lawmaker in the chambers, only second to former Senate President David Mack. From the National Assembly, Waziri Zayyan, NT News. Thank you, Waziri. Now, the federal government believes it is underreported and is therefore challenging resident information officers in ministries, departments, and agencies to leverage on the use of the new media in promoting good government policies and programs. This was the message of the permanent secretary. Federal Minister of Information and Culture, Mrs. Ayo Tunde Adesuba, to a seminar for the target information officers. Abdullahi Garba Birnukudu has that report. Organized by the Bureau of Public Service Reforms in collaboration with the European Union, the seminar was for better understanding of the federal government new information application. With this application, the information officer will reach out to the public I receive feedback for better governance. The permanent secretary was represented by a director in the ministry. It is a revolutionary information application that provides ministries, resident information officers, to send their press releases, stories, photographs, videos online, real time, on the internet. So this app helps us with proactive disclosure. It helps us to put information out into the public so that the, the sphere for uh, suspicion and confusion is reduced. On how the application will work? You download it. You have to download it. It works on Android, on any handheld devices. Every sector is covered on the app. The new federal government information app was launched December last year. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Purunukudu, NTA News. And talking about good government policies and programs, the federal government has once again demonstrated its resolve to complete the second Niger Bridge. This follows the announcement of the release of over 14 billion naira to the contractor handling the project. As Nigerians continue to hail this laudable step, Austin Ademodu made efforts to ascertain the situation on ground, and this is what he brought back. Back into 
Back in 2016, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatu De Fashola, visited the project site of the Second Niger Bridge on inspection tour. He did not fail to express the determination of the present administration towards resuming work on the project because of its critical nature. Uh, governments of Anambra and the governments of Delta, as well as the government of the Federal Republic, must work together. All the uh, engineers, the professionals, the investors, everybody must just get their hands to the pump and let's get this show on the road and uh, deliver the infrastructure for the development of the country, for our people, for our economy. However, the perennial gridlock often associated with the Asaba Onisha Expressway of the bridge has continued unabated with its attendant losses to the commuters. Even the existing Niger Bridge, built in 1966, is severely overstretched and its serviceability can no longer be assured. Therefore, when the federal government recently announced the release of over 14 billion naira for continuation of work at the second Niger Bridge, Many Nigerians, especially in the southern part of the country, heaved a sigh of relief. I'm very happy for that, to hear that they have already this one for Second Niger Bridge. Everybody is rejoicing. But let him look the other way around and make sure that the money he released are made for the job and is for the job. The advice to the contractor is let them start to work immediately. Moreover, when NTA News attempted to capture the activities on the project site, the crew had security barrier to contend with. Over there, you have the piling machine and some other equipment that had been there since the construction started at the Second Niger Bridge. Even with the recent pronouncement of the release of funds for the continuation of this project, there's nothing to show for now that work has started again. Julius Becker's office in Onisha was bereft of activities except for few security men and utility staff who express optimism that they are going back to site soon. I'm Austin, a demo to NTA News. And as a follow-up to that, the Buhari Media Support Group has commended President Muhammadu Buhari for approving funds for additional construction work on the second Niger Bridge. This is in a statement by the group's chairman, Muhammad Labbo, and secretary, Kasidi Madueke. It observed that after several years of delay and neglect, it is heartwarming that the first time concrete action is being taken on the bridge. The group said that the bridge would remain a critical national infrastructure that will provide access to all parts of the country. And with the commitment President Buhari has shown, his willingness to develop all parts of the country evenly. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Oloni Shaking has saluted the doggedness of the nation's armed forces in fighting insurgency. He gave the commendation while inaugurating the remodeled office spaces and extension of the army headquarters complex in Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma has the details. This is the new look of the army headquarters complex, having gone through an expansion and remodeling process. It comes with more office spaces for senior army officers and a bigger office accommodation for the chief of army staff. Chief of the French staff, General Gabriel Oloni Shakin, urged all arms of the military to be agents of value addition by thinking out of the box on welfare issues of its personnel, as this will boost their morale. I am um, actually pleased to state here that uh, they would in a short period of 18 months, so much value have been added to the Nigerian army. We have the best of relationship, and today I say the success that we have achieved in the Northeast, and indeed all operations across the country, has been largely in terms of the military elements, has been the wonderful leadership of uh, the Chief of Defense Staff. The service chiefs assured Nigerians that more strategies are being employed in ensuring security of lives and properties. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy has dissociated itself from some institutions claiming to be training centers for its personnel. They include the Nigerian Maritime Security Agency, Nigerian Merchant Navy Corps, 
and the Nigerian Merchant Navy Petroleum Security and Safety Corps. A statement by the Acting Director of Information, Captain Suleiman Dahu, says these institutions were dissolved and prescribed since August 2013 by the federal government via an official gazette. The statement reiterates that enlistment into the Navy can only be through the Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, Nigerian Navy Recruitment Centers, and Maritime Academy of Nigeria, Oran. The federal government social insurance intervention scheme for the poor and vulnerable will fast track national prosperity through quality health care and increase productivity. These are the views of guests on NTA Current Affairs program, Moment for Thoughts. If you look around the world, these um, cash transfers have really made an impact in reducing poverty <coughs> and providing some buffer for the poor, making them more resilient to shocks, enabling them to at least start uh, a life of productivity. The whole rationale here is that you have to break uh, the poverty cycle, you have to reduce poverty and eventually break it the vicious circle in that family. That is why households are being targeted. Moment for Thought comes up tonight at 10.30 on the network service of the NTA. Violations on rail trucks is among stories coming from our Lagos network center with Ademola as our guide. Good to see you, Demola. Good to see you too, Fatima. Good, good, good evening and welcome to Lagos. Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Fatai Woshini, says the police will stop at nothing at ensuring that those who perpetuate acts of criminality, especially the killing of innocent citizens, do not go unpunished. He gave this assurance when some suspects were paraded in Lagos. Among them are 87 illegal migrants. Amiji Payos has the details. The Commissioner of Police, Fatai Uwesheni, spoke against the backdrop of a mob attack of an official of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority last month in Apapa, Lagos last year, and the Odufa rival group clash in Lagos Island. These, among other criminal acts, he explained, are currently being investigated following the arrest of some suspects in Lagos. We have increased our visibility our uh, domination of the security space will continue to do that and will continue to make sure that we manage crime um, to the barest minimum in the state. 80 young men between the ages of 19 and 35, citizens of Burkina Faso, Niger and Benin Republic, were also paraded by the command. The illegal migrants told the police that they were on their way to Gabon in search of greener pasture when they ran out of luck at Seme border and they were arrested. Why did you leave your country? My country. I want to go. I was going to Gabon for to go and hustle. The commissioner of police told newsmen that the suspects will be handed over to the Nigerian Immigration Service for further investigation. In Lagos, I'm the Chief Ayus, NTA News. We are still on to NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news continues from Abuja. Stay with us. Remember, Dangote Salt now comes in a new pack. And as you celebrate the season, ensure you buy refined and iodized Dangote Salt. Season's greetings from all of us at Dangote Salt. It's not just salt, it's Dangote Salt. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new GOD M6, carry out everything on that list. Starting now.
Xiaomi M6 with a 5,000 milliampere battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Xiaomi M6, always in power. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. And Business News is up next. It's good to have you join us on business segments. The federal government had on December 13, 2016, submitted a revised version of the 2017-2019 medium-term expenditure framework. The projected 7.298 trillion naira for 2017 budget and predicated the budget on an exchange rate of 305 naira to a dollar. Lead Director Center for Social Justice, Eze Onyekwere, however, calls for speedy approval of the medium-term expenditure framework and strategy paper to facilitate the workings of the budget. In essence, we are saying that even the preparation and presentation of the estimates without an approved MTEF on its own is a violation of the law. Go and look at the fiscal responsibility as that's what it says. So for now, we now have an estimate without an approved MTEF. So the best the National Assembly can do is to hasten the approval of the medium term expenditure framework. Meanwhile, the Federal Ministry of Finance has confirmed the completion of the recruitment exercise for the executive management team of the Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN, and formally applied for the issuance of its operational license from the Central Bank of Nigeria. This was in a release signed by Director Information Salisu Dambata. The DBN was conceived in 2014 and was inherited by President Muhammadu Buhari's administration with the determination to resolve all outstanding issues and set a target of 2017 for its takeoff. The DBN will provide loans to all sectors of the economy and will not in any way result in the elimination of Bank of Industry, Bank of Agriculture, or any other existing development bank. And the National Bureau of Statistics is to release no fewer than 162 reports on different sectors of the economy this year. This is according to the 2017 tentative data posted on the Bureau's website and is expected to release 43 data in the second quarter, 38 data in the third quarter, and 47 reports in the last quarter. Finally, a quick check on closing figures on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That's the package at this time. I'm Chia Zalameki. The news continues. Please don't go away. Thank you, Chia Zalam. We'll take another short break now for more messages. We'll be back in just a moment. Then go away. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeiting cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. So what's up, sweetheart? You really look like you're up to something. I have a secret. Okay. I'll be going to Europe next week. 
seriously. Yeah. Like you have your visa, your, 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 your passport, your plane ticket. No, 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 not that way. Some men are helping us. We pay them, they take us through the desert, and then we cross the sea into Europe. The desert, the sea. Isn't that the route where many have died? Yes, it is indeed a very dangerous journey. In 2016 alone, 4,900 people died while crossing the Mediterranean Sea to enter Europe. Many were Nigerians. For the very few who survived the journey, they are forced into prostitution or other crimes just to survive. Eventually, they will be arrested and deported to Nigeria. Don't be a victim. Don't go this way. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. It's over now to Dane Day Sunny for Sports Update.